Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today we're talking about electrolytes and sports drinks. When do we need to worry about electrolyte replacement, and what's the best way to go about it? Today's episode is sponsored by Zevo Insect Sprays. Nobody wants bugs in their home, but using bug killers with harsh chemicals isn't ideal either, and that's where Zevo insect sprays come in. Zevo's powerful bioselective technology kills bugs by targeting their biology and behavior in a way that's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. It's made with essential oils and other familiar ingredients, so you can feel good about bringing Zevo home. Visit zevoinsect.com slash diva for 10% off your first Zevo order. I recently got an email from Philip who wrote, I work hard outside every day and I sweat a lot. I drink two to three liters of Gatorade Zero for the electrolytes. I choose the artificially sweetened drinks to avoid consuming too much sugar. But are the artificial sweeteners or other ingredients in these drinks bad for me? Philip brings up several interesting questions. When is it necessary to replace the electrolytes that we lose when we perspire? Is a sport drink, like Gatorade, the best way to do this? And what about the sugar or the artificial sweeteners in these drinks? Are they harmful? To help me sort through all of this, I recently sat down with sports nutritionist Kelly Pritchett. Dr. Pritchett is an associate professor in nutrition and exercise science at Central Washington University. She's worked with elite and collegiate athletes, as well as with active individuals, and she's an athlete herself. And in today's show, I'll share some of the insights and information that I gleaned from my conversation with Kelly. Let's just bracket for a moment the question about sugar versus artificial sweeteners and talk first about what happens when we sweat. According to Dr. Pritchett, your body might produce anywhere from half a liter to three liters of perspiration per hour. How much you sweat will depend on your level of exertion and also the conditions, how hot and or humid it is. But it'll also depend on your level of fitness and how accustomed you are to those environmental conditions. Depending on how long and how hard you're sweating, the loss of fluids could cause you to become dehydrated. And this can be remedied simply by taking in plain water. But of course, you're not only losing water when you sweat, you're also losing electrolytes, specifically sodium, magnesium, calcium, potassium, and chloride. Dr. Pritchett notes that you lose far more sodium than anything else. Average sodium losses are 1,000 milligrams per hour, and that's the equivalent of almost a half a teaspoon of table salt. Excessive and extended sweating can potentially lead to dangerously low blood sodium levels, a serious condition called hyponatremia. In this situation, drinking too much plain water without any electrolytes can actually make the situation worse by further diluting the sodium concentration of the blood. So who is at risk of hyponatremia? Well, if you're playing a set of tennis or running a 5K or you're out in the garden for a couple of hours and you're otherwise healthy, you're probably fine drinking plain water. But if you're going to be sweating hard for more than 60 to 90 minutes, Pritchett says it's a good idea to think about replacing those electrolytes as well. One easy way to replace electrolytes is simply to eat something salty, some salted nuts or sunflower seeds, for example. So in Philip's case, he might choose to take a break every couple of hours and have a quick snack or a meal along with plenty of water. A salty snack will quickly replace the sodium you may have lost, as well as the smaller amounts of other minerals. Now, for athletes engaged in endurance sports, eating may not be feasible, and that's where sports drinks might seem to make sense. These sport drinks can help replace the fluids you're losing, but they might not provide enough sodium to completely keep up with the losses. Regular Gatorade, for example, contains just 450 milligrams of sodium per liter. So if you're losing 1,000 milligrams of sodium per hour, you'd have to drink half a gallon of Gatorade every hour to keep up. Powerade, which is another popular brand, is even lower with only 225 milligrams of sodium per liter. Dr. Pritchett notes that there are some sports drinks, as well as gels and gums, that are specially formulated for endurance athletes, and they have a higher concentration of sodium. You can also add a pinch of sea salt to your water bottle or your sport drink, she says, to increase the sodium content. 
And finally, there are salt and electrolyte replacement tablets that athletes often use to compensate for those losses. So how much sodium should you take in during exercise? Well, according to Pritchett, the amount of salt that you lose in an hour of exercise is a lot less than the typical American consumes each day and probably doesn't need to be replaced. But if you are working in hot conditions for hour after hour or engaged in intense and extended exercise, how much sodium per hour should you be taking in? Well, Pritchett says this can vary greatly from individual to individual. I have athletes who are very salty sweaters, she explained to me. You can actually see a whitish film on their skin after exercise. But a liter of fluid and 1,000 milligrams of sodium per hour of extended heavy sweating is a good rule of thumb. And that sodium can come from food, from sport drinks, salt tablets, sport gels, salted water, or any combination of those things. And you can check the nutrition facts label to see how much sodium they contain. Remember that your post-workout meal will also go a long way toward replenishing those electrolytes. Now, before we circle back to consider the pros and cons of artificially sweetened sports drinks, let me thank this week's sponsors. Today's episode is supported by Honest Tea, makers of delicious organic beverages you probably already know and love. Honest Tea takes pride in giving back to their suppliers. For every fair trade certified product that Honest sells, they give back a premium to a community development fund located at the ingredient's origin. That way the farmers can decide together how to spend their funds to improve their lives. And these funds go towards vital resources like clean water, schools, healthcare, and transportation. That's why the small choice of what to drink when you're thirsty can mean a lot to a lot of people. I've always enjoyed Honest Tea Beverages But I never knew that aside from just making great products, they're also doing good things in the world. I'm glad to support a company that gives back to the communities that need help the most. Visit honesttea.com slash podcast to learn more about Honest and how your small decision has a big impact. Today's episode was also supported by Lara Bar. If you're looking for a wholesome snack like fruit or trail mix, but don't have time to prep or pack, Lara Bar has you covered. Lara Bar's real food snack bars are made simply, with just a handful of unsweetened fruits, whole nuts, spices, and sometimes chocolate. The popular Lara Bar cashew cookie flavor is made with just two ingredients, dates and cashews. Lara Bar offers more than 20 flavor options inspired by delicious desserts like cherry pie, chocolate chip cookie dough, lemon bar, and peanut butter chocolate chip. They're always gluten-free, and many are also dairy-free, vegan, soy-free, and kosher. Lara Bar is simple, delicious, and easy to bring wherever life takes you. And they're available nationwide at your local grocery store, Target, Walmart, or on Amazon.com. Explore all their fun flavors at larabar.com. Lara Bar, food made from food. And now let's return to Philip's question about sugar versus artificial sweeteners in sports drinks. Before they became a popular category of soft drinks, sports drinks were designed to support athletes engaged in extended, strenuous exercise. Endurance athletes who are exercising long and hard enough to exhaust their muscle stores of glycogen often rely on sugar-sweetened drinks, gels, or goos as a quick source of ready energy that can be consumed during a workout. Now, you don't need a shot of sugar to get you through a 60-minute Zumba class. Your muscles generally can store enough energy to power you through about two hours of nonstop high-intensity exercise. Beyond that, however, you'll probably need to consume some form of calories in order to keep your performance from flagging. And obviously, a sugar-free sports drink is going to be pretty useless as a source of energy. Now, outside of endurance exercise, sport drinks are simply another source of added sugars. And I do appreciate Philip's concern about minimizing his intake of added sugars. But I'm not a fan of consuming artificially sweetened beverages throughout the day. Even though they can help people reduce calories and sugars, there are some other concerns. Various studies have looked at the effects of non-caloric sweeteners on things like insulin levels, appetite regulation, and blood sugar metabolism. So far, the studies have been mixed, with some studies finding negative effects and others finding no effects. And there are also concerns about the effect of artificial sweeteners on our intestinal bacteria. 
But artificially sweetened foods and beverages generally don't offer much in the way of nutrition. And for all of these reasons, I usually recommend consuming artificially sweetened foods and beverages with the same degree of moderation that you'd use for sugar-sweetened foods and beverages. And several liters a day is definitely more than I would consider moderate. So here's the bottom line on electrolyte replacement. If you're exercising for less than 90 minutes, you probably don't need to worry about replacing electrolytes as you go, and you also don't need additional sugar or carbohydrate to fuel your muscles. You can drink water to replace the fluids, and you'll be able to replace the electrolytes at your next meal. For endurance athletes who may be losing up to two to three liters of sweat per hour for several hours in a row, a sports drink can help replenish fluids and can also supply a source of carbohydrate fuel for your muscles. However, it may not contain enough sodium to completely replace those losses. And finally, for those who work outdoors, and that would be everyone from military personnel to landscapers to construction workers to bicycle messengers to tour guides... Your level of exertion may not be quite as intense or sustained as an endurance athlete, but the conditions can still be extreme and you may be out there for hours on end. So drink plenty of fluids to stay hydrated. And if you're not able to eat at regular intervals, you may wish to supplement with some additional source of salt, such as a salt tablet or a pinch of salt in your water. If your sport or your line of work means that you spend many hours a day sweating, it might be a good idea to consult with a dietitian or a sports nutritionist who can assess your sweat rate and composition and give you an individual prescription for fluid and electrolyte replacement. My thanks to Dr. Kelly Pritchett for sharing her expertise. You can find Kelly on Twitter and Instagram at kpritchettrd or on her coaching website, tridimensionalconsulting.com. And speaking of coaching, if you've been waiting for a chance to do the 30-day nutrition upgrade with me, we have just kicked off a new round. Fall is a great time to get back into healthy habits, so come join us. All of the details are at nutritionovereasy.com slash upgrade. And put in the code NDPODCAST and you can save $10. That's nutritionovereasy.com slash upgrade. Thanks to Philip for his great question, and if you have a question for the show, call the Nutrition Diva listener line at 443-961-6206, or come find me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm at Nutrition Diva. Our show is produced by Nathan Sems, edited by Karen Hertzberg, and our team also includes Morgan Ratner, Emily Miller, Kate Hines, and Michelle Margulis. Thanks so much for listening, and have a great week.